Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to a little dye pot weekly field trip. We are outside, we've got a five gallon bucket and we are gonna do a cool vat tonal yarn today. Now I like to use this cool vat to dye yarn, it's a lot of fun. And a lot of times I use the slow absorption, lower heat and long amount of time to dye some more semi-solids with less variation. But I have a lot of dye today that's left over and I wanna pump up the tonal variation in here. And so I thought it would be fun to do this using some twisted skeins. The plan is to add the dye, the acid, the yarn to the pot, wait a little while, I'm not sure how long, um, and then untwist the yarn and put it back in the pot with the thought that we'll get some uneven absorption because the yarn on the outside will absorb more color and then we will get uh, less color absorbing in the middle. Now, the yarn we are gonna use today is Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% nylon. And I'm adding some reusable nylon zip ties, which will help me later on as, um, after we untwist the yarn to keep it from getting really tangled. I will say it is a lot harder to twist your yarn when um, you are wearing gloves than it is when you're not wearing gloves. Oh man, it is burning and it was chilly this morning too. It is currently August 2020, the end of August. Now the dye that I have is a non-specific stock that I mixed uh, earlier this week. I initially mixed about 12 grams of Dharma gunmetal. I believe that's the color name. If not, I will correct it right here. Uh, 12 grams of gunmetal with six grams of Dharma True Black. And then I dissolved it in around two liters of water. And I've got maybe around 800 milliliters of this left. So this is a lot of grams of dye and a lot of pigment. And that is why we have 400 grams of yarn twisted ready to go. Our five gallon bucket is about two thirds full of water, excuse me. And now I am going to add our dye, add it in. And then I do have some leftover, this is mostly just water from rinsing out some of the other implements that had this. And I'm gonna use that to rinse out this huge, huge mason jar I have. Now, we want a tonal yarn, so I am not gonna worry about mixing this um, really well. But what I do wanna do is add some vinegar. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six tablespoons. We may end up wanting more later on, but now let's take this yarn and pop it in. And you can see, ooh, outside you can really see this color. It is not quite a navy. Um, it is a bit deeper than a navy with all of the black in there, but it is really fun. I am not squeezing the yarn hard, but I am more just attempting to submerge it. And you can see as the yarn moves away that we are getting uneven absorption just from the way that things are sort of placed right now. Okay, I think what I want to do is first remove these gloves. Oh, my hands are so sweaty. Um, but I am now going to place this lid on. You can see some bubbling in there. Um, and that bubbling is the, and this bubbling is just because there is some air trapped in these skeins. Um, but I'm gonna place the lid gently on for now. And I think we're gonna let this go about an hour. And then we will come back to try to add, um, well, to untwist the yarn. We'll see uh, what has happened in that period of time. There's a chance that this would have worked better if I had started with wet yarn or if I squeezed the yarn in there a bit more, but an hour is a long period of time. So we will be back. All right, it, 
<laughs> there was a bird in the bush. Um, it has been an hour and now let's try to open things up without making too much of a mess. And it looks like we have actually a lot of color penetration in here already. So I think the total amount of variation we might see might be less than I was expecting. Um, I'm looking for the other. Should have brought the gloves out. Um, I'm twisting. And here's the last one. All right, I have gone in here. Um, so let's now uh, try, oh dear. Should, this is why you wear gloves, everybody. And this is also why we add zip ties, so that way later we can detangle. All right, so now at this stage, um, and I could have had more acid in here, but yeah, this is gonna definitely give us some darker and lighter patches in here. Um, I am excited. All right, I'm gonna go wash my hands. So I can stop recording and we're gonna add more acid right now. I've successfully glazed my cuticles, I think a little bit, not that you can really see, but I've got about a cup of vinegar here, pouring it over the top. And I'm not going to intentionally stir it, mainly I don't wanna splash up anymore. What I am gonna do is cover this. And I will say the water in here was cool out of the tap. Um, and then when I uh, just now was checking it, the water was still cool. So even though it's a really, really hot day, it has not warmed up very much. I'm gonna now go set it aside and we will check in in a couple of days. We are many days later and it is humid, so the lens is a little blurry, but it's about to rain again, so I want to get the yarn inside. All right, uh, and it's been a while and the thing I'm the most, ooh, this color is gorgeous. The thing I'm the most curious about is what the runoff is gonna look like. And that runoff looks really clear to me. Um, but let me get a cup so we can actually check. Okay, let's check. I actually think that there is, yep. We have some amount, oh, you can't see but we do have some pigment in here. It's a bit hard to see. There is some, I think in the grand scheme of things, it is not a ton of color. Um, and if we look at our yarn, I definitely see, which I'll, I'll bring you inside, but I do see some lighter patches, but overall, this is a very, very deep color. I do wanna go ahead and steam set this. Uh, and I'm gonna hang on to this. I don't know if we'll use it or, uh, if we'll dispose of it, but there was a ton, a ton, a ton of dye. Here is my little steamer basket, and I'm going to be putting the yarn in. And I know some color will go into the bottom because we're seeing some color from the yarn. Just like we saw outside, there is a bit of color left. Now, compared to what the pigment was before when it was staining my hands, this pigment in the color isn't a lot, but it does exist. And so uh, I don't know if steaming will help it. It's possible that that's just gonna be excess dye that will wash out. But I will go and move this to the stove top and we're gonna steam the yarn for 30 minutes. One other note as we're getting nice and steamy is that the yarn absolutely smells like vinegar which is great, but I don't think the level of acid is an issue. Um, it's possible that, you know, cool that for this long, you know, a lot of color did absorb. Uh, so there just really could be a bit of residual pigment. And today is Saturday morning. I set this up last Sunday, so it's had plenty of time. Okay, it is raining now, so I have the camera just inside my mudroom. And let's take a dry skein of Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn and dip it in to show you. And the color that I'm seeing right now is barely any color at all. I don't know if you guys, I guess you can kind of tell. Um, so there's no question that there is pigment, but it is definitely more of a light gray blue. 
And if this pigment absorbs to this yarn, we could end up with a medium color, but the color that we have inside is incredibly saturated. So this is just a little curiosity if I can get things to clear with fresh yarn, but also just a demonstration of how uh, pastel it is. It's not changing my uh, clothes any colors. It's the end of August. I do expect it'll warm up this week again. So I am just gonna leave this in here in my sealed five gallon bucket for a few days. <laughs> Meanwhile, our time in the steamer basket is up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the yarn in here. I just wanna show you, it is nice and steamy. I'm gonna leave the yarn in here to cool completely so then we can wash it. I might remove it after a little bit, but I'm gonna let it remain, get some additional heat while I do some other projects around the house. Let's wash this really, really deep midnight yarn. It's gonna be hard to see if having it twisted at the beginning really resulted in any uh, tonal variation. It looks like, and especially in the sun, I see some spots that look more navy, but we'll have to see how patchy that is later on. But the good news is that since I've got 400 grams here, there's a little bit coming off, but the, for the amount of yarn in here and the depth of color, uh, that is really not bad. Let's add a little bit of some clear dish soap to see if the bleeding gets worse. Now, I still have 100 grams of yarn in the same vat just to see how much color that will absorb, and we'll be checking on that in a couple of days. Gosh, I am now forgetting the black that was in here. I know that, was it blued steel? Maybe it was the blue, I'm totally blanking on it because that's what happens when a week passes. But some blocks do need like just a bit of rinsing after. Uh, from what I have heard. And yeah, there is like a hint coming out, which honestly, I would barely consider this bleeding given the sheer depth of color here. So I will go ahead and rinse this a handful of times. Uh, it would be better, honestly, to rinse this in a five gallon bucket uh, so I could have more water volume. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the reason why I say that is that with more water volume, it would be easier to rinse in a greater volume of water, get whatever needs to be rinsed out, out. Um, but I will check back in in a moment after I've rinsed some more. It is just a couple of minutes later, and I am not seeing any more bleeding. So, um, I am happy, I and mean, again, I didn't think it was really bleeding as much as some residual to rinse out, which might mean we don't see a lot of color on that extra skein. But anyway, I am now going to go and put this through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. I wasn't sure if this was gonna show up on camera, but I actually think that you can see it pretty well. There's one skein that has a higher amount of variation. Those paler sections are still pretty deep and saturated, but compared to the rest of the skein are a little brighter. Uh, in the next skein up, uh, in the second skein up, you can see that there are some light patches, but there's fewer. And then the final two have less, but in here, even though there's not that brightness, <laughs> which I say in extreme air quotes, but you can still see the variation in here. And so those top two skeins will have gorgeous depth and you'll see subtle, subtle differences in the stitches. So it's not a true solid, but I would call those two a semi-solid and maybe these two down at the bottom more tonal. As for the color, it's definitely deeper than navy. Uh, I would maybe, I don't know, is midnight blue more black than navy? I'm not sure. It is very much the color of a night sky, which isn't black, but it's sort of black, but has some blue in it. It's a beautiful, beautiful deep color. Now, as for the dye that was left over, we have a corresponding 
gray. It's a bluish gray. It is a nice cool toned gray, but it is gray nevertheless. And I would say that this gray mop of our mops is paler than this lightest section that we have over here. So twisting the skeins did not give me the total effect that I was hoping. I think I was hoping for more of this in the other skeins, but I think if I really wanted to achieve that, there are a few things I could do. I think that if I were to start with damp skeins and then twist them up, that way I wouldn't have to press them as much when I put them into the dye. I could just soak them in the dye, leave it there for more than one hour before opening it up. I think that that maybe would help. But I'm still very, very happy with the depth. And even though the four skeins here aren't matched, I'm very, very happy with it. Because if I were to take this one and flip it over, um, it looks more like the, the one right above it, but it still has more lightness than the top two. So I've definitely tried to arrange them here so you could see the most variation possible. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. I love tonals and semi-solids, and the color in here, I don't think... Oh, you can kind of see on camera how we've got that deep, deep, almost black and then blue in there. Ugh, if it were a paler color, those differences would be so much more obvious. But I, I am absolutely in love. And the five gallon bucket is going to be making an appearance a lot more going forward. Uh, so let me know what other kinds of techniques you'd like to see me try with this longer time scale cool that technique as I try to see what kind of control I can have if I'm really just letting things sit in a bucket for a few days. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you enjoy the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I always post at least twice a week, but during the holiday seasons there are always extra special events with extra bonus content that I really hope you enjoy. If you have been a fan for a while and want to know how you can help support the content here on the channel, I do have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, where most of the yarn that I dye in these videos ends up, and so it's a great way to support the content. You can get some gorgeous hand-dyed yarn featured in one of my vi videos and support the content at the same time. Uh, I also have a Patreon and some limited merch on Zazzle. You can find links to everything down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.